Fanbyte says the Persona ports are coming to PlayStation 5 and Steam, by the way. Atlas has confirmed P3P, P4G, and P5R's ports aren't just an Xbox joint. However, fans are concerned about localizers abusing the IP through things like censorship, and corporate types are mocking them for those concerns. More on that coming right up. If you find these segments to be interesting and or informative, please consider liking the video and or subscribing to this channel for more daily. Back to the news. Much of the fans' concern comes from this announcement by Katrina L, where she announces that she will be the localization coordinator for the release of P3P and P4G on Xbox and Windows. Christina has recently been in the news a bit for her take on Young Jump, calling it sexist and misogynistic or something of that sort as well as her defense of the localization for I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend Into a Girl, where fans criticized the localization for allegedly erasing a gay femboy character by turning that character into a trans character, and therefore also erasing the yaoi relationship that the author intended. If you haven't been keeping up with all that news, I will also link the original segments in the description for you if you'd like to get the full context. And also keep in mind Christina's recent announcement as being the localization coordinator for the release of P3P and P4G on Xbox and Windows. And so, as you can presume, people are concerned about Christina's involvement with Persona due to things such as her defense of allegedly abusive localizations, and many fans are reporting that they're apparently blocked by Katrina for saying things as simple as, good thing I have Persona 4 on my PS2 and PS Vita, including evidence of the block right there. Reminiscent of Philosophia Gaming mentioning the other day that he was apparently blocked by Katrina, and then unblocked. Let's take a look at some of the comments responding to Katrina's announcement for being the localization coordinator. Many would question what exactly even needs to be localized when the games were already translated into English, prompting Katrina to answer this, saying, honestly, for a port title, it's mostly just making sure everything from the legacy version makes it into the port okay and adjusting any button prompts or terminology for the new platform. Not to downplay that work, though, porting a game is hard, especially on devs. Some, however, would ask Katrina to do a little bit more than that, specifically asking Katrina to remove certain content content that they dislike from the game. Another example can be seen right here where Court says remove weird dialogue from Ken's social link please. Someone else asking Katrina to remove the transphobia from P4G. Well, we have seen Katrina say that this localization will apparently just be making sure that everything from the legacy version makes it into the port okay. However, while that may be true for this case, many would still have concerns about future localizations that Katrina may work on or lead, given her track record of apparently supporting abusive localizations, as well as other derogatory remarks that she's made about concerned fans in general, such as calling them all TERFs or right-wing for simply asking why she was defending the erasure of a gay character. I now present to you the one and only Christina Tasty, who responds to one of these corporate types, Colin, who apparently works as a gaming journalist or something of the sort for RPG site, and Colin tries to defend the abuse of localizations. Christina responds by saying, Wild idea, I know. Wacky even. Mind-bogglingly bizarre. But maybe they shouldn't censor it. It's an easy way to stop that. Adding, The localizer in question got caught defending terrible localization. That shouldn't have happened. Of course people are paranoid. It didn't take long for people to realize her job is literally to put one thing from a port to another port. So if anything has changed, it'll be found. Blaming people for having basic perception skills? Shake my head. Let's take a look at Colin's full take, where he complains about YouTube videos here, calling them rage bait, and I'm sure he's probably talking about me as well, despite the fact that if you actually watch my segments, I'm not really here raging at all. I'm making very reasonable points, at least in my opinion, based off evidence that we have. He would continue off going on about how anti-localization people are the dumbest breed of people imaginable, and how he feels bad for the localizer and now coordinator Katrina. I find it very telling how he has to resort to insulting people who have genuine concerns about empirically abusive localizations. For example, I'm not sitting here insulting them. I'm simply bringing up concerns that fans have, that I've witnessed, and the evidence that supports those concerns. What do these corporate types do? Insult the fans, call them TERFs and right wing and the dumbest people around. All this coming from someone who accused others of raging. Seems like self-projection to me, but let me know what you think in the comments. Anyways, Colin would continue totally not raging right here, as well as right here, where he says, These people do not care about anything other than finding a reason to be mad at. Their life has no purpose unless they have something to be upset about. I promise, dude, if you spent less time being tricked by people who want to use you for hate click engagement, you'd be happier. Or alternatively, as Christina Tasty pointed out, how about localizers just essentially stop abusing intellectual property? But no, apparently Colin and these corporate types would much rather blame the YouTubers and the fans. How dare they talk about the factual abuse of Japanese intellectual property that localizers have been caught doing? 
The fans would keep pushing back, however, in a tweet with over 1,000 likes from Respect Elves, they would say, This hatred of localizers did not come from nowhere. Remember when people questioned Fire Emblem Fates localization, and in return they tried to accuse us of harassment? Very similar to what we're seeing going on right now as I speak, where these corporate types, these corpos, these journalists, and these localizers are trying to blame the fans and the YouTubers for having the audacity to talk about this stuff. Christina Tasty even adding on to the tweet from Respect Elves, saying, The amazing thing is they literally deleted entire conversations because they thought they were too boring and thought they'd get away with it. Yes, this stuff has been going on for a while. I'll once again also reference a situation I reported on two years ago regarding Manga Gamer, where they had a Discord leak of a private channel for the localizers, and the localizers were caught just saying terrible things about anime fans. Speaking of prior news, did you see the segment I reported on the other day regarding the alleged hit list that localizers made of people that have called out corruption in the localization industry that they're trying to get deplatformed? The list allegedly includes a number of people from Twitter and YouTube, and in my coverage I did express some level of doubt towards the existence of the list, which I do think is the right call, as it's good to be skeptical, especially of things you read on the internet. However, with recent developments, I'm starting to lean more on the side of believing that that list actually exists. And to be fair, in my original coverage, while I did express doubt, I did mention that I would also not be surprised if it was real. However, as we saw evidence of, in this video alone even, a number of these localizers seem to have immense rage towards people like myself and you. And I'll show you even more evidence of such right here. I present to you now Steiner, who says, At the end of the year, I'll be moving south to join P-Cube Games full-time as their localization coordinator. And through a simple Twitter search, I found something that Steiner has said about me previously, writing, Match his entire shtick. Put out tons of short videos about the latest literal nothing drama out of random posts, often by accounts that are either sub-100 follower count or run by teens. It's hard to tell if he actually buys into his own grift, but his audience loves it. Just to cite a couple of examples here, but yeah, this localization discourse is certainly drawn out of nothing. I'm just making all this stuff up, blowing it out of proportion. All the artists I've covered that have been harassed, that's all nothing. Oh, the Asian hate that I've covered, yeah, that's all nothing too. Oh, the voice actors getting death threats and all that, oh, that's all a bunch of nothing. And I love how he tries to use the, he's just a grifter line, despite the fact that my videos are literally free to watch. Back in March, this Steiner dude even went on a rant about YouTubers in general. Now, I'm gonna read this, but let me preface this all, this whole Steiner part by saying I could care less what this dude says. The reason I'm bringing it up is because this this is further evidence that these localizers and localizer, excuse me, localization coordinators now have major resentment towards fans and YouTubers, which is important to take note of for the overall point of this video. So let's read. Steiner says, Thinking about how much money I could make from Patreon if I sold out my dignity and made 10 minute YouTube videos about how a couple of low reach posts on Twitter are in fact a legitimate attack on your freedom and pose true risk to your safe anime space. Whoa, this teenager redrew this anime character in a less visually appealing style and with stretch marks? Ooh, you a grown man are scared by this? We need to fight them off. Old episodes of anime are being uploaded to YouTube with mediocre subtitles. This is it, bros. Funimation is finished. The entire Japanese people are on our side. They hate the localization menace, localizer menace. Look at this. Camera pans over five tweets written in broken Japanese. You know, it's really interesting how this dude and his fellow corporate types seem to always have to straw man the arguments that they are apparently against. Meanwhile, people like myself will literally show you the arguments of the people I am referring to on screen. I'm not making up their points. Again, they are literally on screen for all to see. I also find it odd how Steiner and corporate types like him seem to hate when major corporations like Funimation get criticized by anime fans. In other words, I don't really understand why they feel the need to lick the boots of these major corporations so much, yet it does seem to be a routine theme. However, once again I'm only going over the Steiner stuff to show you the resentment that localization coordinators, journalists, and so on seem to have for us fans, and how all of this can further back up the potential existence of this alleged hit list that they may also have. They know who we are, they don't like us, and they hate the amount of support that we get. And so I'll leave it there. The situation gets crazier and crazier. Long segment, man. I hope you enjoyed, though. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you there and tomorrow for the next segment.